Hello everyone, welcome back to another live 2D episode. So now we've, we're moving on from motions to expressions, and expressions are just these finer facial animations or what have you that is assigned to our character. So if you look in the root container of the actual live 2D character when it's been imported into Unity, you have this expression list object. And what it has is these expression objects which you can find inside of the expressions folder. Each one of these expressions can be assigned to the live 2D character to change something about their appearance. So if I look at Mao and come down to let's find the expression controller right here. So it's going to be defaulted to like negative one which is the default value. And this is just working off of the indexes of that expression list. So if we look at that and change this from negative one to zero, we can see that she's a blushing now. And if we change it to one, then she's all sparkly eyed. And two, she is uh, not impressed. Three, she's happy. Four, looks kind of like the default. I'm not sure what that is. Five, she's very happy. And then six, she's shocked because I'm taking way too long for her. All right, so that's basically how we change the expressions. We just go through and change that integer to whatever expression we want here. And this is a matter of just figuring out what the expressions are and then making sure that they are labeled correctly. So if we look in the expressions, you'll notice that I've renamed two of these already. I've renamed default and I've renamed blush, and the rest of these are just expression, underscore, and whatever the index is. You can do this just to help you identify what they are. So if we look in uh, Mal right now, look back at the expression list, we can see blush is one of them and default is another. And these other ones are unnamed, so we really don't know what they are. We just know that the, ind the indices trigger them. So if we look at Mao and then change her to 1, that would be index uh, 2 of the expression list, or index 1 of the expression list. So that would be this one. So she's bright and sparkle-eyed, so if I look at exp4, I would go ahead and rename this file to sparkle eyes just like that, and enter, and then we get this message here, that the main object name should match the asset file name. So we can go ahead and fix object name, and that goes away. But we've also got this little um, file here, so I'll replace exp4 with sparkleize as well, so they both match up with each other. Not something you have to do, but it does make it easier when you look at the expression list, you can tell, okay, that's what this expression is. It's sparkle eyes instead of exp03, which tells you nothing about it. There, so I've renamed all of these animations, and if I look back at her expression list, I can now see clearly which ones are what. So now that's just the basic part of how we change these expressions. So I'll just set that back to negative one, which doesn't matter because uh, I'm in play mode, so I'll go ahead and exit but all of this stays the same. So we could go ahead and do that for the rest of our characters, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get into the logic of coding this for us. So back in our live 2D character, let's go ahead and include the namespaces that we're going to need from the live 2D system. These will be imported into the project when we import that uh, Unity package. So let's start by getting our live 2D, that's the root namespace, and then cubism, for the live 2d tools and we need rendering and we're also going to want using live 2d dot cubism dot framework dot expression so that way we can get everything that we need for these particular characters so along with our animator we're also going to want to get two other things we're going to want to get our render controller and specifically for setting our expressions we're going to want the expression controller uh, so let's go ahead and make sure that we get those as well. Let's create a private, and this one's going to be a cubism render controller. So cubism render controller, and we'll just call that render controller. The second one we're going to want is the expression controller. So private cubism expression controller. We're going to want the render controller because we're going to want to 
uh, mess with the sorting priorities and the opacity for this character for fading it in and out uh, because regular image color ain't going to work for us. Uh, we'll need to override the enter and exit function for this character in, in, uh, in a hot minute. But let's start with our expressions. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our expression and let's make it where we can get this in two different ways. We can either specify the integer for if we know the exact index of the animation that we want to set, or if we want to control it via the name of the expression, like I was naming them a second ago, then we'll also make that a possibility as well. So let's start with public void set expression, and this is going to take an integer called the expression index. Simply all this is going to do is take our expression controller, and say the current expression index equals expression index. But for us to access this, we need to actually grab our controller. And we can do that pretty simply because we've already got the motion animator and we know all of these are going to be attached to the same object. So we can go ahead and say render controller equals motion controller or motion animator rather, motion animator dot get component cubism render controller and the same thing for the expression controller equals motion motion animator dot get component and this will be the cubism expression controller and so then in test characters if we go ahead and set mouse expression to five which equates to her happy expression then it'll go ahead and change her expression and she will have her happy expression but let's say we don't want to do that. Let's say we want to specify the name of it, because that might be a little easier sometimes. Let's go ahead and make another one for public void set expression as an alternate function. And let's, instead of specifying an index, we'll give it a string and call this the expression name. So in this function, let's go ahead and check for the presence of this sort of expression within the expression list that our uh, live 2d characters using so first of all our expression name equals expression name to lower let's make it case insensitive and then let's loop through our whole expression list so for int i equals zero while i is less than expression controller dot expression list dot cubism expression objects dot length then I++. plus plus. So let's go through each one of them. And now we need to go ahead and check the name, but we need to get the expression data of the actual uh, object that we're representing because this is not a string. We're going to need to grab the name of it. So let's say that cubism expression data, which is the object that's contained in this list, and let's just call that expr for expression. Then let's set that equal to expression controller dot expression list dot cubism expression objects i so we're going to grab this current expression that we're on and then let's go ahead and check the name of it so if expr but the way these names are formatted is they have a dot and then a expression at the end of them i guess you could get rid of that uh, i don't think it's a file extension but it's, it's this right here. It's blush.exp3. If we show that in Explorer... Okay, so yeah, that is just part of the name. But I don't want to go messing with these names too much. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave that exp3. It's there for a reason, I assume. So I'm just going to leave that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the name and then just split this by that period. And then we'll just grab the first one, dot to lower, make it case insensitive. If that equals the expression name, then we know this is a match, and we'll go ahead and grab the expression. So we'll do that by index. I'm actually going to separate this into a separate function. So private int get expression index by name string expression name so I'll go ahead and grab this pop that in here and then return I otherwise we'll return negative one and set to the default so then set expression 
what we're going to do in here is say our expression controller dot current expression equals get expression by name and the we'll pass in the name and so then I'll change this from five to let's say shocked we'll do her shocked expression and so then we get one second delay and we transition to her shocked expression. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for these other characters. Let's start with Rice and I'll go to her uh, animator here and get inside her folder and assign that animator controller right there. And the same thing for Natori. Assign his animator. Whoops, not there. Let's remove that. Uh, inside of his actual object, assign Natori, and then Koharu is the last one that's remaining. So let's take her and set Koharu to her animator. And all that's left is to rename their expressions and animations. So I'm going to speed through this process because we covered how to set up their animations in the last video, and we've just covered how to set up their expressions. And by speed through, I mean skip. Okay, there we go. So I've got the characters animating. For some reason, Koharu decided to glitch out and did not want to show up. So I'm leaving her out of this one. But the other three are ready. And let's go ahead and link up their expressions now. And as it turns out, Nitori is the only other one who has um, expressions here. The other ones just have animations. So let me go ahead and hop back into the test character script and go ahead and try this out on the other ones. Okay, so not only is Mal going to change her expression, and uh, actually let's give her a motion as well. Mal.setMotion, and we'll just give her a bounce. Okay, so not only is Mal going to set her expression, she's also going to set her motion to bounce. And then Rice is going to set her motion to play the beam animation. Natori is going to do his typical anime thing, what they do with the glasses. And then he's going to set his expression. So we should see all of them do something different. Here we go, and there we are. They're setting their animations and expressions. Cool, so live 2D characters are pretty much working now. That's that's basically all we need to get them up and running. We do just need to override a couple functions to give them the proper functionality like the base uh, sprite characters have, like setting colors and darkening, highlighting, prioritizing, and all that good stuff. But for right now, the basic Live 2D implementation is taken care of. So that's it for this episode. We're going to end it off here. And in the next episode, we'll work on converting those uh, or overriding those methods for the other functions that we have available to these characters. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next one.